hi, Lisa. Good to see you again. Thank you, Steve. Good to see you, too. Uh, Dr. Lisa Price is a licensed naturopathic physician. Expertise is in complementary cancer care. And you also do some nutritional work in cancer. Uh, you're also an adjunct professor at, uh, was it, Bastyr? Bastyr University, University yep. Yeah. And chairperson of the research uh, for the Institute of Naturopathic Medicine. And you serve on this board, too. Yes. Kudos to you. And besides that, you asked, yes, had some time as an NIH research fellow. That's right, yeah. And uh, and that was in the complementary and alternative medicine field. Right. So you've been a very, very busy person. I certainly have, so yes. Thank certainly you have. for taking yeah. time to talk to us. Oh, absolutely. And today we're going to talk about mitochondria and improving the function of mitochondria right. and its impact on our health. Um, and how it's important for hydration as well. So uh, let's start with the basics. Can you tell us what mitochondria are and why sh we should even care about them? Yeah, so mitochondria are actually one of my favorite subjects. And um, they're because they're such an essential component to life, right? In life mm -hmm. and disease processes, etc. So in a cell, we have things called organelles. And, um, and one of the major organelle, or if not the major organelle, is the mitochondria. Mm -hmm. So mitochondria exist as double uh, membrane uh, organelles. So you've got the cell, you've got, the, cell you, you've got the, the nucleus of the cell, and then you've got all these other organelles that do lots mm -hmm. of things, mm -hmm. uh, including making proteins, etc. But the mitochondria, which are, as I said before, double membrane uh, organelles, are the engines of cells. And we could say actually the engines in, in terms of making energy of, of, of the whole the whole body mm -hmm, in, mm -hmm. in fact. So we've got um, so in cells there's just not one mitochondria, there's thousands of mitochondria. And depending on where the 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 uh, cell is, for example, mm -hmm liver or brain or heart, there might be thousands and thousands of mitochondria. Um, and so, so mitochondria um, uh, undergo a process um, within, within the cells of making ATP. So let's take it, let's kind of take it back. So for example, sure. say you have a, a wonderfully healthy meal of, of kale and, and maybe a, a plant-based protein. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and your body breaks it down from, from macromolecules, from micronutrients. Mm -hmm. and, um, and those micronutrients are absorbed in, into, into the body. And they're eventually, all, almost all um, nutrients are broken down into the currency of glucose. Right. And glucose then gets broken down um, by a process called glycolysis into a, um, a uh, you know, kind of chops them in half. And that goes into something called the Krebs cycle. And the Krebs cycles, it, the, the main function of the Krebs cycle is to capture the energy from the glucose mole, mo molecules in um, the form of, um, let's just say, NADP or NADPH. Mm -hmm. And then that's transferred um, into the mitochondria. And the mitochondria then it takes that energy and it, and it um, through many mechanisms, which we'll probably talk a little bit more about, mm -hmm. converts it to adenosine triphosphate, or ATP, or energy. And that's um, our energy molecule that makes it all of it happen. That's what makes it all happen, because ATP then is dispersed through the body for metabolism and um, repair processes, so many different di different yeah. processes. Don't want to diverge here, but mm -hmm. what you described was very sort of chemical. You know, it just goes from molecule A to molecule B to molecule C, etc. But I read a good deal about how it is also kind of a bioelectric process. I mean, it's moving electrons through. And maybe you could talk about the electromotor potential in the mitochondria themselves. Yes, and that's where this double membrane comes in. Oh. Yeah, this is where this double membrane comes in. And, and we don't want to get too technical here for, for our audience, but yeah. basically what it is a, an electrical process. It's called the electron transport chain, in, uh, in uh, fact, yeah. right? And so these chemicals transport these electrons. But what's really cool is that there is a, 
an electron potential or a membrane potential that's, mm -hmm. that's created that basically causes these electrons to shoot through the, the, the mm -hmm. membrane mm -hmm. and, then, mm -hmm. um, and then be captured by the ATP. Yeah. Well, and, and it's an amazing story that actually the amount of energy that we have, what is it, 90% or so, has to come from these mitochondria. Has to come from the mitochondria. So yeah. it's really important that our mitochondria are working in a, in a robust fashion, in an optimal way yeah. as well. So I think you've given us pretty good reason to care about mitochondria. Uh, can you give us any ideas about how we can take care of our mitochondria? Oh, absolutely. A absolutely. There's, there's a number of things. Number one is exercise. There you go. I know. Exercise is, is the, the great, it's the magic bullet that everybody's looking for. It really mm -hmm. is. So what we know is that is when a, a person undergoes consistent and regular exercise, mitochondrial health and function improve. Mm -hmm. So that's number one. Number two is intermittent fasting. Intermittent fasting, which is, uh, you know, uh, anywhere from 16 to 18 hours and, and over um, without consuming anything that turns on metabolism, um, turns on the process of mitophagy and another process called autophagy, which uh, helps to clean up uh, broken down mitochondria and also helps to clean um, up inside mitochondria. So it allows the mitochondria to function function better. So it kind of gives a, a little bit of a pause on all of this processing and gives a chance to clear out and I guess settle out the house, clean that's, out the house. That's right, bit. because if we if we think of mitochondria as factories mm -hmm. and the factory is going twenty four hours a day and we, yeah. we what we know is that things kind of get thrown on the floor, things uh, get you know, uh, are used so much that they begin to not function so so efficiently or effectively. And if we have that period, that, that five hours to shut down and clean up, mm -hmm. then the whole process works a lot better mm -hmm. and without m more mistakes or, as we said, uh, effectively and efficiently. Yeah. yeah. Uh, back to, you know, what else can we do to help our mitochondria? Yeah, so we also can uh, eat a balanced diet that's yeah. rich in antioxidants. Mm -hmm. Because one thing is is that when the mitochondria are, are going and going and going and working very hard, um, they will produce something called reactive oxygen species, which can oh. cause damage to the mitochondria, inside the mitochondria, and to uh, mitochondria have DNA, mm -hmm. uh, which is very vital. And it can also, uh, so that those reactive oxygen species can cause damage to the, the DNA. And so antioxidants are involved in neutralizing the reactive oxygen species. Now, another thing that we can do to make sure that the mitochondria are functioning well is to, to remain hydrated. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so let's talk about hydration for a second. Yeah. So yeah. hydration, um, when we think about hydration, we usually think about water, but it's not just mm -hmm. water. Right? It's mm -hmm. not just water. So, so okay, great. Water's wonderful. We're seventy percent or seventy-five percent water, or something sure. like that, right? So that that's that's great. And water acts as a, a solvent, and it acts as a um, a, a reactant media. So, mm -hmm. so that's wonderful. But we also know that hydration just doesn't mean water. It also means electrolytes. So electrolytes like potassium, calcium, and magnesium, and, and some others. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. um, and and those that those electrolytes help with metabolic processes and to also retain fluid where fluid is. Needed. That's kind of almost back to this bioelectric characteristic of some of our cellular functions that is partly chemical and it's partly electrical. And That's it's right. all in a very dynamic relationship to generate this energy that kind of keeps us going. That's that's absolutely mm -hmm. right. Yeah. yeah. So so it sounds to me like this might be pretty important for athletes then too. Oh yeah, yeah. You know, we've got, uh, as far as the mitochondria goes and how it uh, is associated with athletic recovery and then mm -hmm. also performance. Mm -hmm. So what we do know is that the uh, the energy production of, in mitochondria is, is mainly aerobic, right? Right, okay. And so, but with- uh, That's, That is, it needs oxygen to actually do its process. Absolutely. Yeah. And so, 
athletes that are able to uh, extend that aerobic period because mm -hmm. what we have is that we have um, with, when one is exercising right. and especially with elite athletes um, uh, they, they exercise and at some point they go, get to they go past the aerobic and into the anaerobic and in the anaerobic state you're, we're producing more uh, lactate lactate or lactic acid right. and that lactic acid and they're also producing more reactive oxygen species and then also uh, they're uh, you know um, have muscle tears and inflammation that, that's going on but if we can keep the uh, their um, if we can keep the energy metabolism in an aerobic state we have we have less of those those properties happening those so, things happen so this you said two things that really piqued my curiosity. Yeah. One was the ability to use oxygen as your metabolism energy driving component, your aerobic phase. And the second was utilization of lactic acid and presumably recovery or mm -hmm. reducing lactic acid buildup. So the Heil studies mm -hmm. seem to indicate that if you took this highly uh, negatively charged electrolyte, 330 millivolts of electric charge, that you would have um, a longer time to exhaustion. Yes. And presumably, then that meant you were using your oxygen more efficiently. That's right. Did, did you see that as well in the that, study? That, that's right. And the studies that we're talking about are from uh, Montana State University uh, right. Human Performance Laboratories. And they were done with, um, there, there were two studies, and they were done with um, athletes. Mm -hmm. And they used, uh, or they took measurements um, with these athletes before using nion, mm -hmm. so, okay, so mm -hmm. that nion, and then after using nion. And what they came, one of the, the, or a couple of the outcomes were, one, lactic acid clearance was, right. was quicker and faster, and then time to exhaustion was mm -hmm. longer. Mm -hmm. and, um, and so it appears that there was an increase of mitochondrial function. Or it could have been mitochondrial health as well. Right, right, right. There were also, if you remember, um, there was also an outcome where it looked as though the um, the athletes were able to have a higher level of oxygen. Yeah, VO2 max. That's yeah, right. yeah, yeah. That's right. So that would kind of indicate, at least from my viewpoint, that maybe the mitochondria were operating more efficiently or better, uh, maybe more a more healthy mitochondria as a result. Um, and that the clearance of lactic acid, maybe uh, a general athlete would feel not only that they'd have more energy or they could work longer, but the next day they may be able to recover better, do you think? That's right. That delayed onset. Um, uh, when, when athletes, uh, in a particularly uh, athletes that are just starting out, uh -huh. you know, maybe they hurt themselves and they're starting out again, um, or elite athletes that are pu pushing themselves have that de delayed onset soreness right. that happens. And it appears that when the mitochondria are, uh, the capacity for aerobic respiration is greater, they have less of that, the, 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 the soreness, which enables them to uh, compete better, a better coordination, um, mm -hmm. and, and then there's a there's a lot less time off because of the soreness that, that they develop. Yeah. So so a person taking nion, yeah, uh, one might not feel like they're stimulated, but they may have more energy. It's kind of subtle because you don't really call it up unless you need it, <laughs> and if you need it. Uh, if you're measuring your time to exhaustion, you'll you'll notice it. Probably the first time you'll really notice it, though, is the next day when you're not as sore. When you're not as sore, and you're yeah. able to, and, and then you're able to participate, or even to, to go a little bit further in yeah. your 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 workout sessions. I think that's interesting. What you just said, though, is that that you may not be able to um, notice it unless you engage. But there are so many other things that, that uh, energy 
does for us, right? Mm -hmm. So for example, um, uh, having a baseline energy for other activities. I mean, exercise is great, but yeah. doing other activities and also for our mental health status as well. Oh, um, good point. Yeah. Really good. yeah. Well, because we also know that even though this cranium only is maybe, the brain is only about 3% of our body weight, it still consumes 20% of our energy. That's right. And there's your mitochondria. And there's your you. mitochondria. That's right. There's <laughs> your mitochondria. So, so having healthy mitochondria really affects everything. Yeah. So, if you're exercising, you're making your mitochondria better. That's right. If you're taking nion, you're making your mitochondria better. That appears to be what. And, and if you're exercising, your attitude is better. That's right. And that's because your mitochondria. Hey, it sounds like we've got a we've got a really positive cycle going on. Here. <laughs> <laughs> positive as far as ions go. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Right. The negative ions get you a positive result. That's yeah. that's right. <laughs> I like that. Yeah. <laughs> so so mitochondria are, are are essential and vital for for uh, for human health and also for um, you know if one is prone to chronic health. Um, uh, disease process, for example, if there's a hereditary health issue that, mm -hmm. that we know we're, we're prone to, um, taking care of our, our mitochondria and paying attention to mitochondrial health and function and doing preventative uh, uh, things for it is su super important. If you're an athlete, absolutely make sure your mitochondria are functioning because that is at the heart, that's the heart of optimal um, performance. Um, it, it, as, it also, mitochondria are at the heart of immunological health. Oh, interesting. Interesting. Part of immunological health. So, so when... Our immune system is driven in part by the mitochondria. They, it is. It is. There is a process called apoptosis. Mm -hmm. Have you heard of apoptosis? So, yeah. apoptosis is a, a, a selective cell death, or sometimes people call it a selective cell suicide. Mm -hmm. And um, there are many, and there's also cell, uh, cell repair processes. Mm -hmm. So both of those very, very important um, mechanisms to help with our immune system, apoptosis and cell repair, are also guided within the, the mitochondria. So, so really the mitochondria is, is an extremely important organelle. In our bodies. You know, you, you brought up an interesting uh, side note because you mentioned how important hydration is. Yep. And um, I remember when we had some initial reviews of the Heil study, and they saw that this improved hydration. Mm -hmm. I said, mm, nah, it couldn't. I said, but here's the data; it does. Mm, nah, I don't think it could. <laughs> yeah. Go to do our research and. The data is there. It turns out that actually the mitochondria, when they take in the oxygen to go through their chemical process, use that oxygen and then they exhale it by carbon dioxide mm -hmm. and water. Mm -hmm. Actually, the mitochondria, in addition to producing the energy, they actually help your immune system or run your immune system and they help you stay hydrated. They actually produce water from the stuff you're taking in. Yeah. So I mean, it's amazing how involved they are in our overall, overall health. Yeah, we 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 have micro environments within within our bodies, and each of it's what it sounds like is that each of the mitochondria is is creating you know creating well it is a microbiome and it's creating its own. Uh, H2O or, or water yeah. to be used yeah. in all these electrical processes that are going on in the body. Yeah. That's very fascinating. Yeah, and I, I, to build on that electrical side of it too, uh, there's been some studies that have shown that the water that's produced at the mitochondrial level has a negative charge. Yes. Huh. That's probably part of the mechanism to maintain this uh, electromotive gradient at the inner membrane mm -hmm. of the mitochondria. Mm -hmm. That's so important to drive all of our All the processes, processes. of the, yeah, ATP production. And, right. and you had a comment earlier, what was it, that you know these, these things in our body don't just exist 
by happenstance. <laughs> they all have a, an amazing function because they've been actually evolving for over a billion years. That's right. Yeah, that's right. Pretty amazing, isn't it? It is amazing. Yeah. It is amazing. yeah. I think that's been a really enjoyable conversation. I really appreciate the time that we spend together. On, on behalf of our online community, I want to thank you so much for joining us today. It's always a pleasure to hang out, spend some time. Um, I love uh, being able to talk to nerds. Oh, and I'm going to take you back to uh, my uh, storyboard, and I want to show you the importance of um, how important millivoltage is in human health, as opposed to milligrams that everybody else is focused on. So interesting. It's the millivoltage that makes all the difference in our health. So interesting. I yeah. look forward to it. Okay. Yeah.